What up YouTube, this is Frequent, and you are watching video number two of my sound design tutorial series. Today I want to go over Sampler and some ways you can use it to get some sort of new sounds out of bases you've already built. Today I'm working with this bass, which is a sound compression bass I made a while ago, um, and I'll let you guys kind of listen to this. It's using the exact same techniques that I showed you in the video before, video number one. Uh, so let's take a listen to this sound before we put it in the Sampler. <laughs> Cool, it's an okay sound, so let's go ahead and open up Sampler and drop that in there. Um, first thing you're gonna have to do with Sampler is always make sure your root note is right. So first thing you're gonna do is pull this down to, it's probably an F1, presumably. Oh, come on, F1. So let's listen to this, turn this one off. Cool. Other thing to keep in mind, this is always going to turn your sample down by 12 by default. I'm okay with that in this instance, but if it's really quiet, then that's why. Just head over to your global tab and turn that up. Um, the other thing is your filters probably, I'm not sure. I have all my default settings changed for most of my plugins. So um, I'm pretty sure Sampler by default has this low pass filter engaged. Um, I usually just turn that off right off the bat so you're not chopping any of your highs. And then I really like this soft shaper, this soft... Um, uh, there's like hard soft sign for bit. I really like the soft. So. Sounds good. Um, so the first thing I want to show you guys is kind of the classic loop technique. Um, you hear this. I'm going to get rid of this audio. We don't need it anymore. You hear this in a lot of tunes. Uh, first place I heard it was Cohen Sound uses it a lot. And um, it kind of uses the fact it uses like the way sampler functions to create really interesting pitch bends and what i mean by that is if you take a normal sound so like let me actually get that sound back if you were to pitch this while it's warped um the time will stay exactly the same so if we listen to this the length of the sample doesn't change but the pitch changes and you have all these different algorithms within ableton for how it's going to try to preserve the time while changing the pitch but if you turn warp off what it actually does is it, it's like a vinyl record basically like if you speed it up um or if you pitch it up rather it'll speed up the sample and if you pitch it down it'll slow down the sample and the reason this is cool is because it doesn't lose any quality of the audio um and also because you're actually changing um the sample in real time as you pitch it the length of it so you can get all these really cool little whips and warbles and stuff um so sampler even without looping when you pitch bend stuff has a way different effect and it can be really interesting so we're going to dive into that uh without a loop as well but before we get there let's start with um just choosing a loop point on this sample and i usually go for the back forward loop mode at first and i link it and then um we'll cr create a smaller loop here and kind of just try to find a good spot so i'm just browsing around here i'm going to enable some of this crossfade too and I'm just trying to find something that sounds interesting as a loop. So, oh, unsolo this one, my bad. So that's a really good loop point. So to show you the effect we're going for, I'm initially going to do this just with the pitch envelope. I'm going to crank this up and give it some decay, and you'll immediately hear what the sound is I'm talking about. And I've heard that in countless neurotunes, um, but it's a really, really cool effect. And you can do it just using the pitch envelope, tune it to your liking, but where I find it really fun is to actually go and make your own custom bends. So I'm going to increase this pitch bend range to its maximum, which is 24. And I'm going to go and make a MIDI clip. Actually, let's make it like that long. And we're going to go find our root, which is F1, I think. Oops, my bad. Um, let's see. Yeah. Cool. So now let's start adding some pitch bend to this. Um, when I'm doing pitch bend stuff, because of how hard it is to reset things to zero in Ableton, I usually just make a bunch of zero points. Um, just so it's really easy to get back if we need to and we can delete these if they get in the way I think I actually changed it there. Yeah, so got a bunch of those. So let's start playing with this. Let's see what we can get so Cool. 
so that sounds really awesome um next thing we can do is start playing with the fm and sampler this is one of my favorite parts of this plugin is you can actually feed waves in over your initial sample so um i really like just using pure sine or a triangle wave so we'll try a triangle and i like to go like really low with this course value so like 0.25 or 0.5 and let's see what that sounds like so it's a little too low um the way we can get around this is we can actually change the root note to be f2 or f0 rather and that'll move it up and then we're gonna have to move the midi down so it should sound the same and then hopefully we'll see Let's try some stuff. It doesn't sound quite the way I want it to. Let's try going the other way. Let's try moving it up to F2. So um, these, basically what's happening here is you have um, the FM is too low for the sample, um, so we want to move the sample up two octaves so that the FM can be low and still sound good on it. So we'll move up to it still sounds the same, and let's see if we can get this to sound good at this point. Yeah, that's more what we're looking for. So now we should be able to get down to the... Yeah, and it doesn't get those weird... Still don't think it sounds good in this instance. But we'll get into that later. We can use those when we're not doing the loop mode thing. So I'm going to turn this off for now and we'll experiment with some FM in a minute. But um, first thing I'm going to do, whenever I'm working with sampler like this and I'm just trying to get a bunch of different cool ideas, what I'll do is I'll just create a resampling track and just bounce a bunch of these different things out. So let's resample this. <laughs> full thing because it's just the same at the end so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to try experimenting with different loop points and different loop modes so we can change it from back forth to just forward Let's see if we can get something else so that sounds pretty much the same let's try a different part of the sample that's pretty cool. Now let's play with the pitch bend a little bit and see if we can get something else. So we'll go. So we sample that out. Cool. Drag that over. So that's all fun and good. Let's try doing some stuff without the loop on now. So we got some good loop ones. Uh, I'm going to just disable this loop mode. Um, turn off link. Turn it to that. And so now when we listen to it, it'll just be affecting the pitch in the same way, but it won't loop. So we'll get like a bunch of interesting whips in the sample. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, so then let's try um, disabling all these pitch runs for a second uh, because Ableton is Ableton and does that stupid pitch thing. I'm just going to do that. Um, and let's see what these FM things sound like when we're not doing anything else to the patch. So. That's crazy. So we can. Um, what I like to do is I like to automate this so we can go ahead and just start doing some stuff with this. And then we can actually 
actually, if you want to get some really nutty sounds, you can automate the pitch of it so we can. <laughs> turn down the amount for that. That end part kind of sounds like shit, so I'm going to just cut that from it. Um, but yeah, let's get that. So we got a bunch of these interesting things. So I like to use this to like kind of get different movements and textures out of sounds um, just to kind of like extend the bass we had. So now instead of just having that one flat iteration with one note, we have like all these different pitch bends. Um, if you know the key of your song, you can do like different riffs and start creating stuff so we can delete all these automations. Um, just mute this channel, go back to here. So, um, oops, what is going on there? I was just playing it way too low. So you can start drawing out like little bass lines and start um, automating this feedback and stuff. You can really do whatever you want. Um, but I want to get into sort of the more experimental realm of sampler and some of the fun stuff you can start exploring there. Um, so those are really good techniques for building like very like usable bass sounds. But if we want to make some really experimental shit, um, I really like to head over to this modulation panel. So one thing I really wish you could do with Sampler was automate this start, start point, which you can do in Simpler, um, but Simpler just doesn't have a lot of these cool functions like the FM and stuff. Um, so the way around this is you can actually automate your start position if you use um, this modulation panel. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a really short loop um, and I'm going to link it. All that link does is it makes your start point uh, the same as the start of the loop. I'm going to bring this down so it's really small. You can hear you can get some cool sounds if you can move around. Um, so what I do is I go over to modulation and enable this. Um, basically, this is just an, a filter you can or wow, a filter, an envelope you can attach to any parameter. So I like to attach it to, for instance, loop start. And what this is going to do is it's going to actually move the start point of the sample while it's looping. And you can get some really weird, interesting effects with this. But it's super touchy, so you might have to give me a second to get it right. So I'm going to crank this loop start all the way up, and let's see what we can get out of it. That's cool. And you can actually see Sampler just like glitching out, which is really cool. Um, I'm going to actually set this decay. Really weird. So now let's play with this end loop length. So um, to get some crazy sounds out of it, what we can do is we can go and enable an LFO that's automating the loop length. So um, where this end point is, we can, we can automate that with an LFO. So um, you just go down to here and we go to loop length and that's going to change the end position of the loop. And then we can start automating this. I like to use this random wave. Or that's not the random wave, this is the random wave. So we can start to get some really nutty stuff out of this. So um, let's just move this up. That's cool. So um, now you can just start experimenting a ton and resampling these out. So let's get that one. Cool. Let's get the lower one. And 
they're going to be different every time because we have the random wave on, so. <laughs> Nothing really interesting that time. Um, so, also to keep in mind, you have these negative and positive values, so just by switching these around, you can get some cool stuff. here so basically what's happening is we're creating um like an oscillator out of this because we're looping it at such a small rate but this random wave is changing that length just a little bit so you get all those pitch differences <laughs> stuff out of this so let's change this loop end <laughs> try doing some different stuff here i'm gonna re-enable the pitch envelope here and then start playing with some fm <laughs> it's gonna get real nice. <laughs> cool so let's grab that So yeah, really just playing with those parameters, um, I really enjoy getting experimental with Sampler. Um, there's no limit to what you could automate. I mean, you could then go, uh, just to show you one more thing, the Morph filter in this is really cool. So if we change this to Morph and then um, just kind of set a arbitrary frequency and go back over to our modulation panel, we can change the filter morph, um, which is gonna be right here. And change that around. So I like to use random waves for a lot of stuff when I'm doing things like this. So, um, what? That is not what I wanted. I want to keep it in here. Oh, wait, can you not change the. Oh, there it is. My bad. So, random. <laughs> crazy stuff um we can play with this again so we can change the loop position that's cool oops i don't want to overwrite those so yeah stuff you would never really be able to synthesize by actually trying um, it's just a lot of really experimental sounds that you can get out of it. Um, so yeah, just to kind of overview what we've done here, um, turn off grid, put all these next to each other, take a listen to some of the sounds we got. Um, so the original sound we used was a bass called Chopped Dog. So if we put Chopped Dog in here, you can listen to the original sample, which was this. <laughs> And using sample, we've been able to get all these different. <laughs> 
so yeah guys uh those are some fun things to try with sampler i hope that information is useful to you um make sure to subscribe to my channel like my videos all that shit and i'll see you guys next time cheers